Hello everyone, my name's Brian and welcome to Overland Calling. Are you interested in awnings and maybe not totally sold on the 180, 271s, checking out different options? Well hey, you made it to the right spot. That's what we're talking about here today. I do a lot of camping, I even work from the road. Um, I'm typically out probably three, four months out of the year. So I got some time with this bad boy. Let's dive in and talk about it. This aluminum case is very durable. As you can see, it's taken plenty of bug splatters. It is plastic covered on top or on the front and back, but I haven't had any problems with that plastic. These bungee cords hold it in place. I would prefer some sort of latch system, but I haven't had any problems with these bungees. As you can see by all the scratches, it has taken plenty of tree damage and held up very well. And this channel on bottom here is used to insert the room system if you choose to get one of those. So let me take you through the setup process. One, take these three bungees off. That allows you to open it up. Then I can pull on these tabs here to pull the awning out. All right, so pull on the tab here. That'll allow it to roll out. I let it unroll just a little bit. Then I actually put it right up there on top. Then what I do is I take these outer arms out. One, and then the second one here. Swing these arms out of the way. Roll the awning out. I keep some cords attached at all times. And I just roll them up with the awning. There are two poles inside of it. I can take those out and roll them down to the down to the ground. Another pole here. So take these poles out. I extend them. Do the same with this one. Then put the arm pull in there, twist it, lock it in place. Second one, exactly the same on this side. Then I can adjust down just a little bit, make it nice and level. Then if you don't have any wind, you don't have to stake it down, but you never know when the wind is going to just all of a sudden pop up. Normally I would run the, run these lines out and stake them in the ground. Unfortunately though, I'm camped on a rock slab right now. So I've got these weighted bags. I just filled them up with rocks and I'll put this actually onto the pole itself. It's also great if you're camping at the beach. You can adjust the height on this by twisting it and you can raise and lower it to the, to the position that you want. Twist it again and lock it in place. Then it's got some Velcro straps here. Four on each side.
and we're done. So there are nylon fittings located right up here on each of these arms. Right there. There are the same nylon fittings that are located on these arms right here. These fittings will just allow it to be able to still remain stable, but it can flex if it needs to. If you notice on these fittings, I have them angled down right now. And I can do that because this fitting here is designed to flex a little bit. There's also a little plastic insert here that contains your LED light bar. And then you've got this fitting here. This cord just connects in right here. The blue button that's lit up, that's your power button. Bam, and there's light. Dim it down by using the minus. Raise it up by hitting the plus. You can switch. So instead of pure white, go to pure amber. And you can do what I call daylight. It's just, uh, it alternates between white and amber. This will light up your awning area pretty darn well. I like the fabric on this. It's a high quality rip stop. I've never had a single problem with a rip or a tear. It's not all good though. I'm not a huge fan of how the Velcro is sewn in. I don't know, it just feels kind of cheap. It's not doesn't seem like quality Velcro. That being said though, I've um, been using this for over a year and I haven't had any problems yet. Also, this bar here is probably a weak point, especially if it's gonna be heavy wind or if you're gonna be in rain or something like that. So if I'm expecting rain at night or if I leave it out when I go to sleep, I always dip one corner down this will just allow the rain to just have a nice channel to flow down. That way any rain won't build up and just add extra weight to the top of it. It'll actually run right down here, across this nice corner flap, and then right down to the ground. Also, on these center bars here, I have had one of these break on me once. They are replaceable and not extremely expensive, but that does leave you without a usable awning. So what I do is I've actually got a brace that I put up under here. And then I just brace it down to the ground. Here's what my impromptu brace looks like. So basically, it's just an awning pole that I've gotten some PVC pipe, connected it in. Then I just put a Velcro strap around the top here to hold it on. Let's go over some specs on this awning. So I went to the manufacturer website. 300 GSM awning material. I have no idea what GSM stands for. I have no idea if that's good or bad. I'll tell you what. The two years I've been using their awnings, I've never had a leak and I've never had a rip. And then they have welded and heat taped seams. I don't know what welded means. Um, I guess the uh, maybe like thermally joined, I suppose. And uh, and the, all the seams are heat taped that I can see like on the awning strip and the corners. Never had a problem with them. Then, ooh, here's an important one. The dimensions, 8.2 feet by 8.2 feet. Basically a little bit bigger than eight by eight. And easy folding back into the case. And yes, this is by far much better than my last bag awning, um, which was an ARB, by the way. It just, for some reason, the, like the way that the end is square just makes it easier to roll. I'm able to get it back in the case. I haven't had a problem where I have to you know, continually unroll it or anything like that. It's always gone right back in. You have some extra space. Okay, and now personal stuff. Question I get asked all the time is why don't I have a 270 awning? Well, one, most of them are much more expensive than this one. And two, I use an awning room quite frequently. I don't really have to here in the desert because I mean, the bugs aren't that bad. But when I'm out in pretty much anywhere else in the United States, um, bugs are always a factor. I like to work a lot at night. And for that, I've got the bug screens to keep the bugs out. Also, when I've got my family with me, they get the upstairs bedroom and I'm stuck down here in the awning. And I want something completely enclosed with a floor 
that's easy to set up, which it's right back there right now. It's also got it beat with the amount of weight. I always try and keep in mind like how much weight I have, especially since it's up top. And the weight on this is 34 pounds which is significantly lighter than any 180 or 270 degree awning. So for anybody watching on TV, if you'd like to purchase this from Amazon, I have a QR code link. Um, I, that is an affiliate link, by the way. I do earn a small commission, at no extra cost to you. Um, I've also put a Amazon link in the description of this video. And one thing I don't want you to forget, always check around, check pricing, check the, you know, Northridge 4x4, maybe they've got a sale, uh, Quadratech, whatever site you go to, always check the manufacturer as well, see if they've got a site or see if they've got a special price check everywhere. Don't just choose whatever link I put up because it may not always be the cheapest. If you're interested in an awning room, I did a complete review on the Iron Man awning room. That's the one that I use with this exact awning. It does work just fine. In my opinion, it beat out the ARB awning, but I do a complete comparison there because I've owned them both. Till next time, enjoy the ride.